Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Been hanging out in the backyard as per usual. Look at that sun. Isn't that just great? Just like a perfect slice of shade that's just below where I need it to be. It's what I want to film is just right, right above that shade and not a cloud in the sky, but that's all right. It's been a pretty decent amount of time on the channel talking about crotons. Got a nice great big petrocroton over there. I've had it for a long time. Crotons are probably one of the plants I get asked about the most in the channel as well. Those in palm trees, I would say, and bird of paradise. Lots of questions about bird of paradise. Been so calm and quiet. And then as soon as I pick up the camera, it's playtime. Anyways, we've talked about it. The Croton Petra, done lots of videos on it. Just Crotons in general. Oftentimes talking about troubleshooting with this plant. Because they come with a lot of complications when it comes to growing them indoors as a house plant. Outdoors, not so bad. Inside, yeah, they can be finicky. You move them, they drop leaves. Change their light, they drop leaves. Just slightly underwater them, they drop leaves. Overwater them, forget about it. Just, just a dramatic plant. There are some hacks and some ways around that, but what that brings me to is the freckles croton. Had it for a long time. I've talked about it a lot on this channel and it's quite possibly one of my favorite house plants that I have for a lot of reasons. One, just that, I, look at it. It's absolutely beautiful. The freckles croton, the growth starts off all different colors, but mostly green and yellow with hints of orange. That's the new growth and it ages out to a more reddish orange and black down below. Has a more narrow leaf when compared to the Petra. There are a lot of crotons, but I'm mostly gonna be talking in comparison to the Petra because that's the most common crotons when most people grow as a house plant. <laughs> Narrower leaves, you could say less colorful, though I don't think so. There's an awful lot of color in here. That is an extremely colorful plant. They have that classic glossy cuticle to the foliage that makes them nice and shiny. Another thing that we just love about crotons. Just about every garden tour that I do, anytime I'm over in this spot, I'm always doing close-ups of this plant because I love it. It's sturdy. I've grown a lot of different varieties of crotons. Not all of them. There are so many. I think it would be nearly impossible to grow all of them. But as far as the ones that I've grown, this has been the most simple. When it gets moved, like when I change the light on it, it doesn't care. When the, the temperatures shift, it doesn't care. Every year I move all these plants in and out. They go into the garage and then they sit in there for several months under grow lights. And I wrap the area in plastic and try and keep it warm. But last year, I didn't keep it that warm because the warmer it is in that grow space, the harder it is to keep up with things as far as just having to constantly water and stay on top of pest management, keep things on the cooler side, just kind of let the plants just drift by until it gets warmer to bring them back out. And uh, my big croton, the one I just showed you, that one wasn't really a fan of that. It did okay. It just kind of hung on, grew a little bit. This one didn't skip a beat. It was like, okay, you're gonna keep me cool and dry? That's fine. Wasn't going to be all like, hey, I need heat and humidity and a good amount of moisture to keep going. The crotons, at least with the Petra, I know when those are in the ground, once they're established, can be more drought tolerant. I can't speak to the others, but I'm pretty sure they're about the same. Once they're established, and I say drought tolerant kind of loosely, when they're in pots, you, know, you have to stay on top of the watering more frequently. And when they're indoors, watering can be even more tricky with them, right? Because you're dealing with cooler temperatures, less moisture in the air, less air flow. So even though it's a plant that can take some drier conditions, if it's too dry, they get all floppy and wilty. But then if you overwater them and the soil takes too long to dry out, then they rot. That's just kind of how house plants go, but crotons seem to be more prone to falling down that direction. But the freckles, it doesn't care. It's just like, yeah, whatever. It lets you know when it's thirsty. It'll get wilty. It was pretty thirsty last summer, so I gave it a repot. It's had a few repots over the last few years. I only bumped it up to like maybe another inch on the outside diameter. Probably could have gone larger with that, but that was just in response to having to water it more frequently than usual. And since I've repotted it and gave it a couple months, it's established itself. It hasn't been anywhere near as finicky. It's also in drip outside though. So we'll see if maybe I need to bump it up to a larger size this winter. Won't know until then, but even then it's still not that big a deal. It just gets a drink like once a week. Pretty simple, especially considering that it's not dropping leaves all over the place. That big one, move it inside, it throws a fit. Whenever you're taking plants from outside to inside, it's good to go ahead and adjust them to some lower light levels, get them used to the darker conditions they're going to experience. With that big croton, 
it takes like six to eight weeks to fully get that adjustment done. And I've done it before and it didn't drop as many leaves. Like it would just drop a few. But over the years I had learned with the big one that I, I can just move it in. It'll throw a fit, it'll drop the leaves, keep it watered, keep the light on it and it'll flush back out and be fine. So it doesn't look so pretty for a while, but it's in my garage, I don't care. As far as a plant that would go in the house, I wouldn't want that to happen, right? Nobody would. This one's not going to throw that kind of fit, at least not to the same extreme as the regular Petrocroton is going to. I can't speak much about its size because I can't really find a lot online about the Freckles Croton. It's not rare by any means, but there isn't a ton of info on it other than basically what I already said. New growth comes out lighter and it fades out into a darker color down below. Old growth dark, new growth light, narrow leaves, but there isn't much out there specifically about the size. I don't know how big it's going to get. Most of the pictures I see, they look like maybe four feet. If you know, comment down below. That would be useful. Anything you have to add, always useful in the comment section. And pests don't seem to enjoy this one as much either. The regular croton that I have, it doesn't get horrible infestations, but I'll usually find a few mealybugs on it. Not that many, it's manageable. I've never had to deal with any spider mites on it that I can recall, but this one, just nothing. Bugs don't care about this one. I don't know why. Maybe there are just other things in my collection that are more tasty. That's a possibility, because you know, with the crotons, the spider mites, those can be an issue, but I don't know. I've had plants around it that get the spider mites, but they don't seem to hop onto this one. That could just be luck. I'm not gonna say that that's what yours will do, because yeah, I don't know. And this croton seems to prefer a good amount of light. Some crotons prefer shade, some will take sun. Getting the best color out of this one where it's getting a good amount of morning sun and then it gets early after. Actually, I think it gets, this gets pretty much full sun all day. There is a point in the summer where the sun was at a different angle and it was getting afternoon shade, but it's getting sun pretty much all day. It's keeping the colors nice on it. It's not scorching anything like that. When I move this outside, it almost never scorches. That other one, I have to move it into the shade, and keep it nice and dark for a few weeks and slowly bump it up, or it'll drop its leaves, or they'll turn black and scorch. But this one, it doesn't seem to care. Now, I still, because I love this plant so much, I always give it a few weeks to chill out with lower light before I move it to a spot where it's getting more sun. And that's just to be safe, because indoors where I keep this, it's a few feet below the grow lights, and I'm not using expensive, fancy grow lights either, so, I would think in the home that it's probably not going to be a plant that's going to throw a total fit if it's not getting really bright and intense light all day long, but it should still get a good amount of light in the home. Really, the only thing about this croton that I'm not crazy about is just that its growth is kind of floppy and wanky. Wanky. <laughs> wonky. And that's because I didn't pinch it. As these grow, when they're smaller, between like probably 12 to 18 inches in height, it's a good idea to give them a good pinch. I got this when it was larger than that, and I didn't realize that I should be doing that. Just assumed that it would grow like the other crotons. Just do what it needs to do. As long as it has nice, rich, loose soil that drains well around those roots, it would have sturdy growth and keep doing its thing and be a pain in the butt during the winter time, like a lot of other crotons are. And the last part's not true easy to keep. I've told you all about that, but it does have a tendency to grow somewhat outwards and hang. So I could fix this just by giving it a heavy prone. I don't want to do that this time of year, really ever. I'm just, I have, a, a, I really love this plant and hate the idea of chopping on it, but I really do think it would make the plant look a lot nicer if I were to do that. So that would be something that I would do in the spring, right when the warmth starts to move in and I'm moving the plant outside and it's starting to look like it's going to move back into active growth. That would be when I will do the prune on it for the rest of this year. And then earlier parts of next year, I, I, if it gets in the way, I'll just tie it up so that it's not all splayed out and hanging like that and then give it a good prune. I'll help thicken up those stems down below on the inside. They're pretty difficult to see, but I'm gonna try and get in here. You might be able to tell the pot is like all the way back there. So most of this growth is coming way out this way. That's nothing that a good prune won't fix, right? Make that cut and that'll help sturdy up the stems down below, get them to thicken up, and then it'll flush out with more growth. Its growth rate has, to me, seemed about on par with most of the other crotons that I've grown. Puts on maybe, I don't know, five, six inches of new growth per season. You can sort of see the new growth in here. It's a lighter green and softer than when you get down lower it's more woody. So from right about here on the stem, 
and up, that's all new growth, which isn't a ton. But for a croton in a pot, that's not too bad. That's not bad at all. In fact, just when talking about this as a house plant, I wouldn't want it to grow too vigorously, right? I don't want it to outgrow the house, even though I doubt this gets bigger than three or four feet. But again, I don't know for sure. Yeah, that's it. Just a little spotlight. Probably my favorite house plant that I have just because it's colorful and it's a no fuss plant. A no fuss. That's not something you can say about crotons very often. They're not the hardest plants to grow, but it seems to be when they're indoors, normal household temperatures, usually the problems I see with them, people are asking about them, is that they are really easy to overwater. So I should mention, I keep this in a really loose potting mix that drains quickly, but it has lots of organics in it. I met it with compost and I fertilize with a palm fertilizer. Palm fertilizers tend to have a lot of macros and minerals and good stuff in them. The crotons have always responded well to that. There is a, another variety that's called pie crust. It looks very similar to the freckles, but the edges of the foliage is like serrated. They have lots of little spiky points on them. And I've heard that that one is also a pretty simple croton. Anybody have experience with the pie crust? Let me know. Comment down below. I'm gonna wrap this up because there's a lot of noise in the background. I don't think it's gonna end anytime soon. If you watch my channel, I talk about this plant all the time. Like pretty much any video I do, you'll see this in the background at some point because I just love it. It's so colorful and pretty and easy. I love a plant that I don't have to constantly fuss with it and worry about it. Just does its thing. So yeah, that's gonna do it. Like I said, comment down below. Tips, tricks, suggestions, always appreciated. It's how we all learn, grow together. If you have anything to add to the conversation, that's fantastic. And I thank you for it. Let's hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.